all to this fun competition Except nobody knows if there's any opposition Face so friendly, smile disarms Everything's good, no cause for alarm Cause I'm like you, and likewise the same But for you this is work, and for me it's a game Give a thumbs up if you know what I'm saying Next round starting, believe that I'm playing Introductions not needed, been completed so to speak Since I always act familiar Reaching Welcome to the social-engineer.org This is a special podcast, so it doesn't even have a number Yeah, thanks Dave uh, we're releasing this one actually the day that we're recording it because we're here to talk about something really close and dear to the four of us. So yesterday, um, Bruce Schneier released a, p- a blog post about um, how education and training in the security industry is useless and doesn't really serve any purpose. So, of course, reading that, um, you know, with my whole motto being um, security through education, and I know this is close to Dave's heart with what he does and ping. <laughs> well, that's the obvious one, right? She helped running a training organization for over 15 years, and uh, Jordan himself is into education and training. We thought we would get together and just have a little 15-minute conversation um, about this topic and why maybe we disagree with that. Um, what was the basis of the argument there, uh, Dave? Do you know? Yeah, so, you know, what, what Bruce was, was basically saying, and, 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 you know, this is pretty verbatim for, for you know, his, his, um, his blog post, what he's basically saying is that, you know, education awareness and training is, is essentially not effective in combating, um, you know, phishing attacks or social engineering attacks or even helping in, in security in general. Um, and he's made some pretty bold statements. He, he made some um, comments around, um, you know, tying it to, you know, the medical industry that not everybody's a doctor um, and some pretty outlandish, um, you know, comments around, you know, basically training just doesn't work um, in general when it comes to security and that you should focus your budget um, on other things. You know, you should focus your budget on other security initiatives like making it easier for users to use their computer in a security fashion versus, um, you know, trying to, to invest in educating users and, and, and keeping them aware of what's happening. Um, so just a direct comment from Bruce from Dark Reading, the whole concept of security awareness training demonstrates how the computer industry has failed. Um, you know, he said, uh, let's see where else. Another area where training works is driving. We trained, uh, we are trained either through formal courses or one-on-one, uh, tutoring and pass the government test to be allowed to drive a car. It uses that in reference to, um, that we're mandated basically to go through and have to pass a test, um, in order for it to be effective. Um. But, you know, his, his whole point throughout the, the whole um, the whole argument is that, you know, as security professionals, we shouldn't be focusing on education and awareness or training and that um, we should be, you know, working on more security through osmosis. Uh, you know, he makes a statement here. Um, if we security engineers do our jobs right, users get their awareness training informally and organically from their colleagues and friends. People will learn to correct folk models of security and be able to make decisions using them. Then maybe an organization can spend an hour a year reminding their employees what good security means with an organization, both on a computer and off. That makes a whole lot more sense. Uh, and I unquote Bruce, Bruce Schneider. So, so his argument is to stop training employees, stop telling them and educating them on what the dangers are, and basically employees will just get together and chat about this stuff and correct themselves? Yeah, it's essentially the argument he's making that um, you know through security osmosis that uh, – you know, basically, we're all going to learn not to do it. So the more companies, I guess his philosophy, it sounds like, and I'm just curious, the more companies that get hacked, once they get hacked, they will um, just go, hey, that really stunk. I didn't like getting hacked. Um, let's fix the problems that we got hacked for. And, and then they'll talk about it internally, and that will be their security training is by getting hacked. Well, I don't think he makes, makes the, the direct correlation to, to getting hacked, but what he says you know, typically is, you know, if you implement security, you know, basically from, from, from word of mouth or experience from the security group that, you know, the security training will, will have the effectiveness as, as, as a security awareness program. And while that may be true in some sense um, to where, you know, if you're, if you're doing the right choices and you're communicating security to the right people, you know, it may um, have a better, better impact in some cases. However, that's going to be very sporadic and, and intermittent to who you actually reach, not your entire user population. So, you know, I guess, I guess the whole article, you know, it's main, main, um, you know, points across the entire board is basically, you know, don't focus on, on education awareness. And he makes a lot of generalizations around online computer training being an education awareness program, which I think Ben has, you know, a lot of experience on saying that's not even close to, to being what an education awareness program really is. So be- before I ask Ben, I just want to ping, wh- wh- what's your take on this? Well, I mean, some people argue that really he was only refer- referring to 
um, kind of general security awareness training and not so much for developers and so on and so forth. But we all know that we're only as strong as the weakest link, which is something that he also said in his article. I completely believe that the more education we give everybody, the better off we are. You cannot ever over-educate anybody. I know for a fact that uh, because I was made practice manager at Acuvant a few weeks ago, as I've sit in, sat on these client calls, people are demanding education because they realize they're, that they're in, people are just at different levels and in different places and that you always have to start with a baseline standard, which is general security awareness. And that's really important. I mean, maybe some people retain it, some people will not take it seriously, but every organization has to at least try to do it. Otherwise, people are always going to just keep clicking the link you know, just continuing to make the same basic mistakes, right? We, I mean, so I, I have to disagree with Bruce. I think it's very important. It's just like saying we no longer teach addition and subtraction because we all have calculators. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. I just I, I look at the 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 whole philosophy behind what he's saying, and it, it confuses me a little bit because just thinking about the clients I work with, some of them didn't even know what a phishing email was or what uh, um, you know what a, a phone elicitation scam was and until you show them educate them they weren't aware so how would they be protected you know, they may be clicking on fish for the rest of their life because they had no clue that this someone can spoof a FedEx email and tell them that their package never arrived to click here to to claim it uh, yeah I, I mean there's it's the same thing with habits that are formed when interacting with people right it's very similar you don't correct your own body language, vocal tonality, eye contact. And even if you do somehow become aware that you're shy or that you're not getting the results that you want with people, you don't know what the problem is. You need someone to diagnose that problem. So if you're going, man, our computers are always full of viruses, and then there's a guy next to you downloading a bunch of video games and porn, and he's like, yeah, man, this sucks. My computer's always getting viruses. Who's the idiot <laughs> who keeps loading viruses on the computer as he downloads, like, some active X control thing and clicks OK because he wants to play Warcraft online, right? So, like, you do need to educate people when it comes to that because even if you're aware of the problem, you're not necessarily aware of the solution. Yeah, so we have a, a special guest on this uh, special edition podcast here. Um, um, it goes by the name of, what, is it Ben 10? Yeah, that's Ben 10. Ben 10 on, on Twitter. And uh, Ben wrote a blog post in response to Bruce's blog post, which we'll put in the show notes when I when I upload this um, on on the website in a, in a in a little bit after the podcast is over, but uh, Ben, just g give us your take. What's your um, what's your f your personal feelings or your company's feelings about this thought that education is basically useless for corporate America? Well, you know, I think I can understand where Bruce's perspective is coming from. When you look at the landscape that we've got right now with all the corporations and their approach to security awareness training, I would tend to agree with him. Because the problem becomes is that most people's idea about security training is that you throw people into a conference room for an hour or two once a year, you put a bunch of slides up on the screen, and then you walk away saying, okay, great, we're done, we've done our security training, and then nothing changes. Um, and we tried that here. We tried you know, cramming people into a conference room once a year, we went through policies, we went through procedures, we talked about all of the horrible things that are out there, and nothing changed. So from that perspective, yeah, it's not working. Uh, so it's more, it's more about the type of training or the quality of training that, you're, that, you, that, you, dis that you say is doesn't work, but not the exactly. fact that training doesn't work. E exactly. I think that, I think that it's, it's the approach that everyone's looking at right now. If you... If you uh, invest in the people that are, that are part of your organization and you spend the actual time to, to do education and not just a one hour training. You work alongside them with them. You give them examples. You give them samples. You set up some spear phishing attacks on your organization. And then when someone, you know, clicks on the link, you don't go on, you know, berate them, make fun of them, say they're stupid or, you know, I can't believe that you would do something like that. But you walk on sign and said, yeah, that's exactly how they do it. That's exactly how these guys get you. They'll do that at your home. They'll do that at, at other workplaces. So when you see something like that, or if you see anything that's out of the ordinary, you got to come let me know. Yeah, and you know, I'm thinking about um, one of the clients that we have as a large financial institution. That's exactly what we do. We get our job is to write phishing emails, 
that are very realistic, the ones that are being used in the market, but of course with different outcome. You know, right? When you click this phishing email, it doesn't um, uh, wreck your life. You know, it just goes to a page that says you've been part of an anti phishing education program and uh, now you're going to be put to some education. And we track that so we know who, how many people we need to educate. And what I've seen over, over a year or so of doing this is you, you see the numbers progressively go down. The more you do it, if we do this every week, every month, and we continue on this path, the employees start talking about it at the water cooler, at lunch, saying, oh, man, I got this fish this morning. And that type of education now creates an environment where people are thinking about security. And, and that, that, that changes the model, the thought process of the company in being more secure. Exactly. And I think the, part of the problem that I think a lot of organizations have is that a lot of the users have the impression that their security team and the IT team actually don't care about them mm. uh, because of the way that, you know, even myself, you know, I treated people uh, whenever they would do something that was, you know, not the brightest or not the most educated. Uh, and instead of instead of educating them and saying, oh, okay, well, you know, that wasn't the greatest idea in the world. You know, here's what you, here's how you spot it. Here's how you fix it. It was, oh my goodness, I can't believe that you did that. You were so dumb. Move out of the way. Let me sit down and take care of the computer. When we when we create an environment where people, in where our users believe that we're going to ridicule or chastise them for bringing to the, bringing a computer problem to them, there's no way they're going to bring a security incident to us. Yeah, and that that's probably similar to what happened at Coke, right? I mean, we don't know. We don't know if that was the exact reason, but I mean, you look at something like Coca-Cola that clicked that email. He get that the comp the network gets compromised, and it's six months before anyone figures it out. Uh, I would imagine that's because there was either poor or non-existent uh, reporting policies that made them report when an incident like that occurred. Well, and, and you know, speaking on experience on my side of the house, there's two major fundamental things that that education and an education awareness program gave to me that. I don't think a lot of people talk about it. And so if you look at the first one, um, you know, being able to, to communicate to users about security initiatives that you're doing and the reasons why you're doing them takes off that mentality of big brother and, hey, we're here to monitor you and, and, and check everything that you're doing wrong. And if you go to, you know, to Ben's point, you come to a, a you know, become a, a caring type, you know, um, department that will listen to somebody, that will listen to people when they have issues. They don't feel stupid for contacting you, even if it isn't an issue. It changes the entire culture of the company so that they'll focus on something security related. So, you know, if I, when I was doing my, you know, when I was a CSO of a Fortune 1000 company, you know, when we did education awareness, it wasn't just about, you know, training users about things that they shouldn't click or they shouldn't do. It was really about communicating our message about the whole company and what our initiatives and drivers were for the business. And at the end of the day, that streamlined a lot of our security initiatives and, and, and fastballed the majority of them. So we can get things implemented extremely fast and, and, and be very lenient on, on, on what we were able to do because they had a good trust um, about what we were doing as far as the organization was going, had very little pushback. So that was huge for our education awareness program alone, not only including and reaping the benefits of, of users being able to detect different things. But one thing I have to say um, about this is, you know, if you look at um, Bruce's comment of you should focus your, your money on something else, I have to say that, that education awareness programs are by far the most cost-effective um, programs out there. I mean, if you look at it, you spend, what, an hour, two hours, three hours max a week on it, or you may have a dedicated, you know, FTE or something like that, but the majority of your cost is going to be coming from the time um, that you spend on, on teaching your users, and potentially, if you're, I guess, if you're saying an hour, you know, long, you know, training that we're used to in the, the whole CBT side of things, you can make the argument that you're taking time away from the company and their people, um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be one of your mo most cost-effective solutions that you have. And your most and uh, your highest return on investment when it comes to um, what you're able to communicate to your company. Yeah, <clears throat> but reasoning like that, which I, I agree with you, Dave. But reasoning on the other side is like saying I'm not going to go to a doctor to get a checkup unless I have a huge cancerous tumor extruding out of my neck, right? I, you go and get checkups so you don't get to that point. So taking yeah. the hour or thirty minutes or whatever is needed to do um, employee based education on security, if it's done right, because I agree with Ben, if it's done right and not that canned, you know, here's this DVD, sit there and text your friends while this plays on your computer stuff. If it's a if it's the good kind of security education, taking the hour out of the business day for your employees to do that has dramatic effects on how um, how how they how they view security and how they relate to security. 
but you don't wait until the company gets hacked and then go. I mean, imagine the time consumption. You want to say an hour per employee once a month to do this type of education or once a quarter or whatever it is uh, versus how many hours will be taken away if you've got to shut down a whole section or a network or take away computers that have been compromised, you know, clean up a breach. Wow, that's that's I can't even compare the two. Yeah, I, I think I think I think part of the problem though is that a lot of the organizations will go. You know what? We've tried that. We've tried to come along our users, and it's just not sinking in. I think the piece that a lot of people think that a lot of organizations are missing is respect. There's there's missing that fundamental level of respect between IT, IT security, and the user base, and that's where a lot of places need to start, and then, and they miss that point. You know, I agree with that a hundred percent. Sorry, there's a huge echo. Oh, here, go ahead. I agree with that 100%, Ben, because um, a lot of times when we work with companies, before we even start, we go in, we see exactly what you're saying. There's this fear behind them. Like, you're just going to come here and tell the boss how stupid we are. And we try to reconfirm that's not our job. Our job is to help you be better at your job, not to just tell the boss that you did something dumb. And and when we when we're done and we get to work with them and they see that that's not the nature of our report our report isn't look at these 500 losers you have it's it's hey what can we do to help these people get better educated so they don't fall for this stuff again and and then the the the, the culture changes but i do agree with you uh, 100% that right now there seems to be an adversarial culture in between security people and the employees and that you know it's it we and, and you know the the fact of the matter is it is nece- uh, it is it is fun for us when we get to do a pen test when we get to send fish and we see people clicking, but the fun is just because that's our job. It's not because we're saying oh look at all these dumb people. At least the the good kind of security. I know like we're doing pen tests with Dave. I worked with him on a big old one. We did phishing and phone elicitation. We did the whole nine yards on that. None of the guys we worked with in his company. Or ours were sitting back mocking the employees and saying, "Look at all these morons! They're so dumb." Um, you know, we, that's not the goal of 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 doing a proper security education. So it's, you mock my clients, but not your own. Yeah, I mock your clients because they're not mine. You know, they're not mine. But, but, but none of he does. But I think that there is a point to be made here that oftentimes there is a bit of a derisive tone within companies where people who. I don't want to say specifically the IT tech support staff often treat the common user slightly badly because like what you don't even know how to turn on the computer is it turned on is it plugged in right yeah, yeah. and I think it's because they're not educated if they when people on board you know in general they don't say do you know how to use a computer there's an assumption that they know that someone knows how to get around a computer but we all know, you know, someone who's older or someone who hasn't been exposed to a Mac who's only worked on a PC or vice versa is going to have a little bit of a hard time getting around. But there's no onboarding saying, here, here's a little tutorial. These are just some basics. You know, if you need to review it, go through it. You know, if you don't because you know your way around, great. Instead, they're like, oh, my God, you're wasting my time. Don't you know I have bigger problems to deal with? So, I, you know, from that, that point of view of, yes, there's always a bit of a why are you so – putting me out on yeah. such basic matters that makes people, you know, kind of come from the position of, well, now I don't want to know, right? Now I'm going to force you to always help me out. Yeah, um, I think that that plays big into it, Ping. I mean, if, if you every time you go to the doctor, if you walked in and he pointed at you and laughed and told you how, how dumb you looked and how stupid you were and you didn't understand basic health things, you would never go back to the doctor, Right, you'd be like, oh, I hate this doctor. Every time I go, it makes me feel bad about myself. So, you, 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 I think if the IT people are like that, the security people are like that. I agree. The culture changes. You know, the employees don't want to come to you and talk to you because every time they do, they feel terrible about themselves. Well, not- I think it all, I think another point of the, the thing is is that a lot of them are very frust- You know, they're flustered because they're like, look, I can barely program my VCR or my DVR at home. And you're asking me to do these complex things. I'm, I'm very flustered. I know I did something wrong, but I don't know how I'm supposed to fix it. So when you don't come alongside them and say, yeah, you know what? That's exactly the way the bad guys do it. This is, this is happening all over the place, and it happens to big companies, not just to you. So here's how you look for it. These are some of the signs that you can look for in the email. And if you have any questions, come talk to me before you click the link, before you open the attachment. I would love it if you came and talked to me. And when they do, say thank you. 
Yeah. You know, we have uh, what one of the things that I do with companies that I work with is I help them set up a reporting or abuse at or, you know, whatever you want to call it, the departments that there's now people that are part of a department and their specific job is to handle that. So you have an email that you don't know. If it's good or bad, don't open it. Forward it to the to the abuse department or to the reporting department, and let them take a look at it and determine if it's good or bad. Um, you know, you, you get you got a phone call, and afterwards you felt a little bad about it. Report it. Say, you know, I, I just had this call. Here was the number they called in. Here's the questions they asked. And and the 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 nature of setting up these departments with companies I work with is is that there's no punishment. So when someone calls and reports it, you don't go back and now rip them a new one. You, you send them a little thank you email for, for doing the job that you ask them to do. And now it's this department's job to look into it and make sure that none of that either clicking or answering or whatever ended in something negative. And, and it does, when you set things up like that, it does change the culture of a company. And it, it, ma- it makes it more acceptable to now report these things. It does. And, and you know, I, I, I think you can use a lot of people that have had a ton of success in a lot of companies with this um, as, as prime examples of what does work. And I think, you know, the, the argument of pitching it out and focusing your efforts on somewhere else is kind of a, a not accurate stand, stance because it is effective. It's not going to be 100 percent, but it, it's, it's probably the best return on investment we have. Other, you know, technology isn't stopping these attacks. You know, it's, it's the people that, that at the end of the day are going to be the ones that really help us discover these type of incidents. And, you know, it's it's really we need to focus on this education awareness program. We need to focus on you know our user population and communicating it to them in a way that that they need to. And you know, at the end of the day, that's going to be our biggest bang for our buck, and that's going to be what drives security through um, you know the challenges that we're having today. I think secure. I think education awareness is the most important uh, security program out there, not anything else. I agree, and and I think what Ben said is got is is probably the crux of this conversation for the five of us, which is it's the quality. And the type of security awareness training that is failing in the country today, not not the not the training itself. Yep. Yeah, I think I, I do agree with that. I think if you ever take a look at some of these canned uh, DVDs or online security awareness training, like the one shoe fits all, it's really um, it's really poor and it doesn't have great quality. So. I know. I think um, uh, this is interesting. Uh, you know, I, personally, I I, uh, I think we should give Dave a little credit. You know, he's been gone off our podcast for three months, uh, building his business, and and uh, hasn't been around. But then he comes back today, and uh, bam, he brings this um, this news article that just got released uh, yesterday, and says, "Hey guys, we need to do a special edition podcast because we should talk about this um, hot topic. You know, really interesting, and for us." Um, Definitely close to all of our hearts because uh, it's something that even even though Jordan's not in the uh, IT industry, he's an educator, and and it's what he does for work. And and all three, all four of us feel that education is something that's really important for our clients and and people that we um, uh, that we deal with. Interesting. Yeah, and just to, I guess to, to close this out with with everything. I mean. Education awareness is important. Uh, people can be taught things, or else, you know, when we get a headache, we would, you know, go need to go get, uh, get some aspirin, or we cut our hand off, know to go to uh, the emergency room. It's just a matter of how we communicate. It's a Ben's point, and um, you know, from what I've seen with with Ben, he's got some very high success ratios with his his user population. It's very, um, you know, it's very interesting to see, you know, how success works within an organization, and it can work. It's just how you do it. Yeah, you know, maybe um, one last thing that we'll close with uh, before we, um, you know, before we, before we close this special edition podcast. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. You know, just kind of got together and did a fifteen minute or so. But there was a news story. Uh, let me see, where is it? It was just released this morning about South Korea, um, and this kind of fits. You know, maybe fits. Well, we don't know anything about their security awareness training, but it fits in talking about attacks. Um, so South Korea banks falls to victim to the biggest cyber attack in over two years, and this was a huge attack. I mean, the the, the cyber attack uh, closed down banking um, in South Korea. It actually affected the, um, the the South Korean stock market as well as the Japanese stock market, the Asian Pacific uh, stock market, um, actually causing it to tumble a little bit. I think it was they said uh, one report it was maybe over one one percent. Um, and South Korea's um, um, stocks fell two, two and three quarter percent, um, just just because of the cyber attack and the banking being closed. Um, 
you know, it doesn't really technically fit 100% into the topic at hand, but it's a really timely story since it just came out this morning where we constantly, every time we turn on the news, we're seeing another cyber attack on something major. You know, yep. it's not your brother's website getting defaced anymore. It's major corporations. It's uh, stock markets being being totally obliterated, major banks and things like that. I know, Dave, you and I were talking about this before we started the podcast. I hope my BBS doesn't go down. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice, Jordan. Well, interesting enough, as we've been talking about this, I got a text, and it uh, looks like I'll be on CNN uh, International News at uh, – at five o'clock today, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Talking about the subject about this, about, about the South Korean banks. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, I got no clothes, like a suit or anything. So I'm going to go uh, run to the, the mall and pick up a suit, uh, suit coat, and uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be wearing any pants. So. Nice, <laughs> nice. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee yeah. it. <laughs> so you know what? You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay someone to come and bang on your um, your your hotel room door during the interview, so you stand up and on camera you'll be no you'll be pantsless. <laughs> hey, the thing is that that doesn't bother me yeah um, you know you're right that doesn't bother you so but you no know, at, at the end of the day i mean th this is what we've been saying i think for a long time i mean it's definitely possible to manipulate um you know stock markets to manipulate um economies to shut down critical infrastructure and the same thing's definitely doable here uh we're not anymore um in a position to protect ourselves than south korea is so i mean this is one of many that i think is going to really start hitting our economy um, and this is why, you know, this, this whole cybersecurity movement thing couldn't be more important of what we need to do to go on the offensive. I mean, we need to start holding these countries accountable as an act of war. So when they go in and they try ripping into us, we rip right back into them. Well, you yeah. know, they don't have an Internet. That's the only problem. North Korea, like, they don't have <laughs> they that. They have Internet. They do. They have to they have, have Internet. They're hosting um, Pirate Bay or whatever that's that is. That's not true. That's yeah, not that's true. true. That's they, they have fake. to have an Internet because they have those, um, they have those commercials in, in North Korea about dreaming – um, about launching nukes, nukes at the United States and, and taking down, you know, Los Angeles. Have you, have you guys seen that commercial? Yeah, I have, yeah. And that looks legit. That, lo that checks out. It looks like North Korean film. I don't know if the guys on the podcast know that, uh, or listening to the podcast know that, you know, I'm a North Korean ophile or whatever, and I go, I've been there twice. I'm going next week, actually. I'm going to be there next week. Are you kidding me? No. What? So he goes every year. Whole <laughs> I'll get to the bottom of this whole cyber attack thing. I'll be like, yo, Kim, what's going on with that? Is that you guys or the Chinese? But yeah, I'm going next week. You know, uh, they I'm listen to our podcast. so For sure. And yeah. they're like, man, they talk so fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think it's an interesting story just because of the fact that, you know, here we're at, and, and it's not just American companies. You know, the State Department got hacked, right? We saw that huge investment company. Um, just the, the, the list of companies goes on and on. But then we see now globally, just as devastating, major banks, stock markets, uh, other are being affected by by this cyber attacks. And what's, of course, occurring is it's affecting major business. I mean, the stock market falling even a percent, that's a huge yeah. deal for a lot of, a lot of corporations and uh, on countries. So this is, of course, uh, something to keep an eye on. Dave, we'll look forward to um, hopefully getting the video and analyzing. If you can throw some good nonverbals this time, it would be awesome for us to analyze. Uh, we got a lot of great hits on that blog post that we did about your, your interview there on uh, CNN. Well, the Fox... The Fox News one, I uh, I didn't have any good good nonverbals, right? Well, the, here, the, there was two problems. The Fox News one, your video was really poor. Uh, the yeah. quality was really poor, and it was choppy, and then you kind of froze a few times. So your stress indicators were all really related to the fact that, that the audio was bad and you knew that you had a poor connection. Yeah. So, um, you know, today, you know, throw a couple, discuss things, you know, definitely talk about President Obama, because when you do, you have some great, you have some great, uh, actually, I'm going to email CNN and have them ask you about Obama, because you have some great nonverbals when we talk about that, you know. <laughs> so anyhow, have fun with that one. Uh, Dave, thanks a lot for the great idea on doing a, a quick uh, special edition podcast. Ping, Jordan, as uh, always. Special, special thanks to Ben. I think you're getting there, but I just want to say special thanks to, to Ben for coming and talking to us about it. I mean, I think this is some of the, the more important topics we have to talk about and discuss because we're still trying to figure out what we're doing in security. And uh, I think this is one of the pinnacle parts of that foundation to be able to, um, you know, really start to build a program. And, uh, you know, Ben's done a good job at that. Yeah, I Ben's was not listening anymore. He's I, gone. I was getting he the Ben. Up. I was getting the <laughs> Ben, but, you know, Dave took all my steam away. I, I know. I, I did that on purpose. Yeah, that just hurts. But thank you, Ben. 
Um, yeah, and, and thanks for the blog post. We'll be putting that in the show notes. Uh, hopefully we'll get this thing edited and up there in the next hour or so, and I'll, I'll let you guys know. We can all retweet it and stuff. And um, I guess we'll 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 talk to you guys when we release the uh, the actual podcast for next month. And follow, follow Ben on Twitter, Ben zero X A zero X Ben zero X A Ben ten. That's, that's, that's Chris. If you don't know, that's that's a hexadecimal representation. Oh, ben. oh, for ten. Uh, oh. I never. I wondered why he didn't just have one zero. Like, how is that supposed to be ten? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so. I didn't, I, I didn't want to cease and desist from Cartoon Network. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're just glad Dave explained that to us because we're too dumb to figure that out. Hey, uh, Jordan, can you throw um, another like really intelligent slam at him that people will have to go and Google about history or something? Oh, uh, man, that's putting me on the spot. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Uh, you know, like that's tough. Yeah, sorry. It's a tough sorry. one. I'll sorry. work on it. Thanks. I'll work on it. Have a list of them so next time you can have some really intelligent slaps. Yeah, but I, I mean, I need... I need to make fun of you guys like Ben Affleck needs acting school. <laughs> I don't know if I get that one, but I'll yeah. laugh anyway. He was terrible in Pearl Harbor. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Now, now we're seeing the connection, which you won't. The, the listeners won't get the connection until we release the actual number forty-four right. podcast. Oh, that's right. That was in the other show. Yeah, that was in the and other I'll, show. I'll miss you guys while I'm in North Korea. Like Pearl Harbor missed the point. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thanks, Peng. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Dave. And Ben, a special thank you to you. We'll talk to you guys later. See you guys. Perfect score, huh? Always have my hands full. You always hold the door. Gather info. You wouldn't take control at first. Shoulder surf your folder surf so I can find your older one. Rotter cooler, small talk, conversation banter. Really, I'm just probing while I'm listening for answers. Yeah. Sure, there's plenty of policies, but no one follows standards. Thanks to all the folks who come to work with different landings. Max, right, bottom marks, all your ARF and tags, but no one's really looking at my counterfeited badge. Uh, Even still, though, there's not a chance to see. You can tell by how I walk. I've got somewhere else to be. Because I'm confident. Like, I'm in a hurry. Like, I've got work to do. Like, I'm going places. Welcome one and all to this fun competition. Except nobody knows if there's any opposition. Face so friendly. Smile disarms. Everything's good. No cause for alarm. Because I'm like you. And likewise the same. But for you, this is work. And for me, it's a game. Give a thumbs up if you know what I'm saying. Next round starting. Believe that I'm... Ah, no signal. My battery is finished. Hey, could I go and use your phone for a minute? Thanks, yo. I had to make a call to play it down while my root kit X filled your data to the cloud. Plan to stall, stand up all, gotta take my time. Scanning all your systems, the ones you didn't wipe. Scamming y'all. I got terabytes of drives. Cannonball in the dumpster when I dive. Black and white, all the info with the details. And what type of person really prints out emails? Still intact, all the sentences and questions. I mean, paper shredders really aren't that expensive. Yup, we want it all. The kit and caboodle. It's not that impressive, but just know how to Google. Found the CEO with the social network name, sir. Nope, it's dual core. We're just leveraging the framework. Welcome one and all to this fun competition. Except nobody knows if there's any opposition. Face so friendly, smile disarms. Everything's good, no cause for alarm. Cause I'm like you, and likewise. It's the same, but for you this is work, and for me it's a game. Give a thumbs up if you know what I'm saying. Next round starting, believe that I'm playing. Welcome one and all to this fun competition, except nobody knows if there's any opposition. Face so friendly, smile disarms, everything's good, no cause for alarm. Cause I'm like you, and likewise the same, but for you this is work, and for me it's a game. Give a thumbs up if you know what I'm saying. If you know, if you, if you know what I'm saying. fun competition except nobody knows if there's any opposition face so friendly smile disarms everything's good no cause for alarm because i'm like you and likewise the same but for you this is work and for me it's a game give a thumbs up if you know what i'm saying next round starting believe that i'm playing